I'm going to talk about a particular type of intervention, which is peer-implemented pivotal response treatment and um, how classmates can help deliver social skills intervention. And if that sounds like it's a bit out of the box for you, the idea of how could um, a small child do this kind of work, um, I just, it's normal to be wondering that question and kind of stick with me and I will uh, kind of show you the data of what has happened around that. So Dr. Cagle, uh, interestingly, I, so I spent most of my autism training in Nova Scotia and in the publicly funded um, early intensive behavioral intervention program that Dr. Cagle actually got off the ground, which was a really neat collaboration between government and research, and um, that program is still running. And uh, pivotal response treatment uh, is really based on the idea of rather than teaching all of these discrete single skills, what's the big domino that if we target this one thing or this set of things can really produce all these other changes without having to directly teach all those other things? Um, and so that big domino really is uh, social communication and motivation. And this still applies to um, thinking about social skills. And what I'm going to specifically focus on is uh, an application of pivotal response treatment where um, we actually teach the children to learn an adapted version of this uh, type of intervention. So instead of, um, and this was a shift for me because I'd spent a lot of time in the autism field where I was the expert and I was the one who was going to teach the child with autism directly. But this is really about uh, taking, uh, typically developing peers and classmates and giving them some skills at their level and um, empowering them to work socially with a child with autism. And let me tell you, uh, a typically developing classmate understands social skills of that classroom way better than I ever could, and way better than any adult could. Um, and, and we've probably all had this experience where we try to teach a child something and then they end up sounding like a little adult. Uh, or they end up talking like we would or I would, which trust me does not go over well on the playground. Uh, and so really this approach is a child with autism is uh, paired with one of these um, uh, interventionists. And we, I use the word uh, play coach. And we often don't even talk about the fact that uh, the child has autism. I usually frame it in the sense that um, we're all really good at some things and we all have some weaknesses in other areas. Like I might be really good at reading, but I might really struggle at math. Or you might be really good at basketball, but you might have a little more trouble at soccer. And so the play coaches are kind of selected because um, you know, you're know really great at playing. And this other little boy or girl, they had a little more trouble with playing, and you're going to help them uh, kind of become their coach, just like a soccer coach might um, you know, cheer for uh, the, their teammates and uh, say good job at that kind of thing. And I think the other thing that's important to think about when we're talking about peer implemented or classmate implemented pivotal response treatment is that it's done in the context of play. So oftentimes, uh, if, to the untrained eye, it might just look like these kids are playing. But actually, there's a lot of really amazing skills that are happening when, when implemented correctly. So uh, this, I really undertook this work as part of my PhD dissertation. And I was really motivated to combine um, my school-based knowledge with uh, my hospital and clinical kind of lens. And everyone said, don't do an intervention study for uh, a dissertation. And gosh, did you know how hard it is to get through the ethics boards and all this kind of thing? And, and, um, and I just was very uh, determined to kind of uh, explore this avenue. Because what I knew was the case is that, at least in Nova Scotia, there was um, wonderful early intensive behavioral intervention using pivotal response treatment as a publicly funded program for preschoolers. But they got it for one year. And then after that, it was sort of like, who knows what might happen? And certainly we didn't really know what was happening in the schools there. Um, and so I was wondering, can it, what can we do in the first year of school? So I looked at the literature to see what was out there. And it turns out there's only five studies. Uh, this was back in, I believe, 2015. There's only five studies that have been done using peer-implemented PRT. And all were shown that it was effective. And the children were between, were between 7 and 10 years old. Uh, it was a two-week program. The adult facilitated it, but the adult facilitated teaching the typically developing classmate and the child with autism. And there was either one child with autism and either one or two classmates with them. And really the idea was to teach uh, these play coaches how to um, facilitate social interactions. 
So this is promising, but uh, it, there wasn't a large body of research at that time. It was more of a promising emerging approach, even though, just so we know, the pivotal response treatment does, is an established practice. It's just that this particular application was more emerging. Since that time, there's been uh, another study that's been done, which is the largest study to date on this, which had 11 participants. And what was neat about this study was that it was actually uh, school staff members who were the people who were really taking the reins on this study in the, in the school system. And the school staff, uh, so there's 11 students who were either elementary or middle-aged, uh, middle school aged, and the, the kids were randomly assigned to a treatment or a control group. So six kiddos uh, got uh, the experimental group or got the treatment. And what they found was that uh, there were statistically significant increases in peer interaction. And uh, the other thing is that uh, play between the kids actually also increased substantially. And uh, what I thought was also quite promising is that school staff felt like they could feasibly facilitate this peer-implemented PRT in the school system. And that piece is really important. Um, and, and when I was doing my research in Nova Scotia, I thought that piece was so important that I actually dedicated an entire study to looking how I can collaborate with schools because I didn't want to be one more of those people who did a really great study in a hospital setting that only worked in a hospital setting that never actually translated to schools. And we know there's a huge gap between when science tells us something works and when it actually gets out to the parents and the, and the schools. And so I thought, let's just partner from the beginning and do this study from the get-go in the schools. But to do that, I, I knew I needed to partner, and I wanted to partner. So uh, this study was just published, I believe, yes, this year. And it was a qualitative study where we interviewed principals, behavioral interventionists, um, frontline staff, so teachers, educational assistants. We also talked to parents of children with autism. We talked to parents of classmates who would, who would be the play coaches. And we actually talked to students with autism themselves, which is a surprisingly overlooked group in research. And I won't go into the details of that study, but I thought this one was particularly interesting. Uh, in the sense that, so students with autism actually did not want to get help from older students when it came to their social skills learning, which I thought was interesting and I was really surprised by because we're quite used to having book buddy kind of models where older students will help the younger students learn how to read. But apparently when it comes to social skills, these kids did not want, they felt it was uncomfortable to learn from older children. So uh, we have a couple of quotes here from students that when we have buddies with like older kids, it felt so uncomfortable. And I would probably leave the older kids out because they may not feel comfortable talking to someone older than them unless the older kid is family. I just don't think that practicing with an older kid is a good idea. 